Okay, welcome to the Town Board Workshop and Public Hearing, Thursday, October 6th. Please rise and salute the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Emergency exits are in back of the town clerk and also the door you came in. Roll, please. Supervisor Perotti? Here. Councilperson Doyle? Here. Blackman? Yes. Brebler? And let here. the record reflect that Councilman Gutierrez will be absent this evening. Okay, I make a motion to open the public hearing for Town of Amina Comprehensive Plan Affordable Housing Update. Is there a second? I'll second. Supervisor Perotti? Yes. Councilperson Doyle? Yes. Blackman? Yes. Revelard. Yes. Okay, if you want to go ahead and do your presentation and then we'll take comment. Yes. Um, hi, I'm Ashley Lai. I'm from ACRF and we are preparing a strategic update to the comprehensive plan to support the initiatives to update the zoning for affordable and workforce housing. Um, next slide, please. Next slide, please. Uh, so first I'm just going to go over a, a, the process and the need for the updates, followed by an overview of the demographic changes that have occurred since the last comprehensive plan update, an overview of the previous goals, and the next steps in the process. Next slide, please. So the main purpose of this update is to amend the text to support the zoning text amendments to facilitate affordable and workforce housing. Uh, these are some recommended text amendments that have been uh, in, in, in the process for about the last year. We were working with the Housing Board, coming up with some ideas of where the code could be tweaked. We've since drafted some zoning law that is under consideration. And since those updates required some minor revisions to the comprehensive plan, uh, while we're in the document, it seemed like a good opportunity to update the background demographic information at the same time because it's been quite some time since the plan was last reviewed. Uh, and also we are adding some language to support a solar farm on the old Amenia land landfill. Uh, this is the current land use map for the town of Amenia. It hasn't changed that much, but you can see there's still quite a bit of agricultural and residential land throughout the town. Um, residential shown in yellow, so it kind of blends with the background. <laughs> but. Uh, <laughs> Um, as, as has occurred in the past, um, the commercial and industrial uh, uh, land mostly follows the Route 22 corridor. Next slide, please. So Armenia has had quite a, a large population change over the last um, 40 years, so, or, sorry, 30 years. Um, it's dropped about 27%, whereas wow. the Dutchess County has grown approximately 14%. Uh, you've also seen a drop even since 2010. Um, next slide, please. However, the population distribution within the town is, is fairly uh, balanced. Um, and you do have a slightly higher percentage of school-aged children than Dutchess County as a whole. Next slide. Um, the number of Amenia households have declined approximately 4.2%, whereas the number of Dutchess County households has increased by about 23% uh, since 1990. The average household size has decreased from 3.2 to 2.6 in 2020, but that's pretty consistent with national trends. Uh, and you have a slightly higher household size than um, Dutchess County does. Next one. Um, your median income has increased over the last 10 years, and all of the numbers that are shown on this chart are adjusted for inflation. Uh, so you are on the rise, um, but you're still lower than Dutchess County as well as New York State as a whole. In terms of your existing housing stock, you have 2,474 uh, owner-occupied units and 1,613 renter-occupied units. The vast majority of your single family homes are owner occupied. Um, that's the greatest percentage of owner occupancy, although you do have a, a fairly a sizable number of mobile homeowners as well as owners of two to four unit homes. Um, in terms of rentals, you see a lot more rental occupancy in the five or more unit buildings. 
um, and you, you also have a, almost a, an even split between single family and renters as well as two to four unit um, renters. In terms of your housing affordability, uh, approximately 29% of your homeowners and 46% of your renters are paying at least 30% of their income towards housing, which means that their housing is unaffordable. Uh, and there's, in terms of uh, people that are having an even harder time making their rent or their mortgage payments, approximately 9% of your homeowners and 23% of your renters pay at least 50% of their income towards housing. So those are some pretty large numbers um, that hopefully can be addressed through these changes. In terms of your existing goals, these are verbatim what is in your current comprehensive plan. Uh, the first goal being to achieve a broad-based balance between the rural, historic, and agricultural beauty of the town as it is and the need for appropriate and smart economic growth and development. Number two is to establish a business-friendly attitude and commitment that will attract and support the development of retail, small business, service businesses, and even light industry. We'll create employment opportunities, especially for young people, and we'll increase tax revenues. To develop and encourage the growth of agriculture as a profitable business within the context of preserving open space. Next slide. To encourage more housing, low, affordable, and moderate income, high-end, and rental to create a genuinely multi-generational community, uh, a vital place with good schools for growing families, and a safe place for young people to grow up and to which they will want to return because of the employment opportunities that they have here, an attractive, safe place for elderly people, and to maximize our strengths and atta attract tourists, shoppers, athletes, lovers of good food and wine, historians, and other money spenders. And lastly, to forge a strong, positive public consensus about the future of Amenia so that we will live up to the commitments we make, enforce the laws, regulations we have, and consistently support community pride. So those were all the goals that were in your existing comprehensive plan. There is one proposed new goal, and this is to address the solar project. Um, to promote environmentally sustainable energy practices, particularly through brownfield redevelop redevelopment and the installation of community solar farm. So what we've already done is we've gone through the entire comprehensive plan and redlined all of the areas that we think should be adjusted to address the solar farm and the new affordable housing tax, as well as all the demographic data. Um, so following this meeting, we will finalize that draft, and it can then be referred to the planning board and Dutchess County. There will be a second required public hearing that is tentatively scheduled for November 3rd. Uh, at that public hearing, the board would also consider the draft local law for the affordable housing text. Um, following those meetings, we would finalize the drafts and the seeker documents to prepare all, everything for adoption. Uh, and then the town board could consider adoption in December. And, and that's it. So I'm happy to take any questions or comments. Is uh, Old Amenia Landfill technically a brownfield? I thought not. No, I don't think it's technically a brownfield. But if there were other sites within the town. Um, I don't think we have any okay. brownfields. But um, so I was curious about that language in particular. OK. okay. Uh, I just wanted to say that this has been in progress for a long time. I was the chair of the housing board before Charlie, and um, we had requested a planner to review the code uh, to see what obstacles there might be to affordable housing. That's the sort of genesis of this. And uh, Ashley did a report looking at the existing code in terms of uh, uh, obstacles to affordable housing or workforce housing, and uh, uh, gave a report uh, to the, the housing board, um, and there was some back and forth about that, and then Ashley uh, drafted actual text to, uh, to update the, um, the, uh, the, the comprehensive plan um, and, the, and the zoning. Um, 
and we were under the understanding that the comprehensive plan has to be updated if the um, if the zoning is updated. I've, I've heard other things since then, so uh, maybe it's less important to do the work we're doing on the comprehensive plan, but the point is just to update the comprehensive plan in terms of statistics, what people actually earn in the media now, how many there are, that kind of stuff, because all of that is, is quite out of date, um, and especially uh, as it relates to affordable housing. Um, so that's a lot of the changes that Ashley made. And, um, and then the zoning is, is fairly minor, but it, it, sort of, uh, it sort of follows the comprehensive plan in terms of meeting the goals of making affordable housing or workforce housing easier to, uh, to construct or renovate. But I think when they said questions, they meant you, not me. <laughs> okay, are there any other comments from anyone? Uh, excuse me. She can re she can repeat the question. Okay. In the audience. Uh, is a draft of the comprehensive plan update available? Is it on the website? In specific language. Do you understand the principles? I think we all support the principles. Right. Would be interested to you know how it's going to be implemented and what it's actually going to say in the comprehensive plan. Right. So so what we have is you need to repeat, repeat the oh, question. So the question is. Um, do we have a full draft of the comprehensive plan update available today? And we have a draft of the update available. It's a red line copy of the original document. Following this meeting, I will be finalizing that red line, putting it all in one complete PDF, and then that can be posted on the town's website. But specifically, if you scroll down the first page, yesterday I remembered exactly how to find it, but of course today I can't. It's but it's, hmm? it's hard. Yeah, well, it's also a very long document. Check. Are these microphones on? I'm not. This is. It's just fixed. Oh, it isn't fixed to the table. Thank you. Just sticky. Um, okay, so uh, um, it's on the. If you go to the first page of the uh, town website, uh, it's towards the bottom. Uh, it mentions the. Uh, it mentions the housing board. And if you click on that, it'll take you to the document. So it's fairly easy to find. Um, and that's all there. Uh, if I'd like to just address that. It is posted in two locations on the website. It's on the front home page, as um, Council Member Blackman has addressed. And it's also under your resolutions. The entire document is posted with the resolution and tonight's public hearing notice. So we put it in both spots, the home page as well as within the resolution. And there um, are copies available in the town clerk's office. <clears throat> Did you have a question? Yes. Um, I read the document. I, I saw the issue of the severity of the housing crisis. I saw the issue of uh, the waste system as a block to grow. But I got no indication of there being a zoning change that was necessary. It was not, no, nothing in the document speaks to anything that you've been speaking to about housing. The zoning change is separate. Okay. You need to repeat so the why, question. Why okay. That's because the zoning change has, um, in order for us to move ahead with a local law for the zoning change, um, we need to get, uh, AKRF needs comments from the town board, the planning board, um, the planning board attorney. Um, the town attorney has already um, given them comments and they're gonna be following up with the rest of the people they are waiting for comments for. Consensual document, yeah, and I can't get any. I, this document tells me as a citizen nothing. It tells me the demographics. It tells me the, you know, the severity. Ashley, do you want to address that? But it doesn't say anything about what the real motive is behind um, redoing the comprehensive plan. Okay, so it sounds like you're looking for more of a affirmative An action argument. statement An within the document. Uh, so. The, the reason for updating the comprehensive plan is that all of your zoning needs to be based on what's in your comprehensive plan. So this, by updating the demographics, by, by amending some of the language that relates to the current language that's in your zoning code, um, so it addresses the new zoning code or the proposed zoning text amendment. Um, it doesn't tell us what that zoning code is as it relates to housing. So it's, 
So, in terms of the comprehensive plan, uh, this was a strategic update. We looked at the full the document as a whole. So we weren't going to go and change the entire trajectory of the plan. But what it sounds like is you're looking for more some more affirmative statements regarding affordable housing and the draft zoning law. I'm looking um, for some connection between what you presented and what seems to be an issue and what's in this document that you're giving to citizens to read to make the decision about. I don't think we even have the real document, the latest document. I think well, I got it more of a red line. This is my, this is my question. Yeah, but show her what the real document is. Well, yeah. If she printed black and white, it'll be. Okay. Yes. So it's got red lines. Yes. Okay. Yeah, it's just probably not a color copy. Um, Laurent. Good. If they're if they're long, you should go to the. Yeah, you need to. You really need to go to the microphone so everyone knows can get the answer, understand what you're asking and how it was answered. So one, my first, uh, I did go through it, all the red lines. Thank you. Um, uh, rapidly, but uh, as about as best I could. First of all, your de your stats and demographics only go to 2020, summer of 2020. Things have changed since then, so I don't know why we're going through all this change and not doing it until a further date. But uh, I think the the pandemic has changed the um, uh, the housing um, uh, uh, numbers in this town, as well as other rural communities or suburban and rural communities. Um, to, uh, I, from what I see, um, most of this is, and I totally understand that we need affordable housing and workforce housing, um, but this is basically about developing the uh, old Taconic DDSO site. I, it's, that's three, that's what the big change is. I, I think no. it's, no, I mean, I think that that's left alone, uh, no. neurons. That, I mean, it is mentioned as, because that is in the zoning, the existing zoning, but that's not a change. It's, um, uh, Ashley, you may want to, you might do a better job of this than me, but, but the DDSO site is something that in the, in our 2007 code was pointed out as a potential area where there could be right, right. a significant amount of development. But that's, we're not changing that. I don't think there's anything. Well, more. that you are changing it in the sense that um, it's, it's the, because of the sewer problems in, in the town of Amenia, that is basically the main site that's being okay. focused on for uh, where you can put affordable and workforce housing. What changes is the regu is easing the regulatory requirements, and that I think is is personally I think unnecessary. As much as I, we're all for it, I think that these that the you know we've seen over the years uh, what has happened um, with regulatory requirements in this town, and I don't see any need to change to ease those. And, and I think we're all would love to see what proposals there are. I don't know if the, if the you know, the, the um, houses or the, the buildings on top of the hill, which are now privately owned, whether they can be used or whether you're talking of a whole other construction and, and that still becomes a ghost town. So I think there's a lot to look into for the public in that development. I don't think that there is a, a sort of final plan yet, and I know that there are also big, bigger issues with the septic than were anticipated. So I don't think that the the ownership is completed, the financing isn't completed. So I don't really think there's very much new on that piece of land. No, I just the only uh, the only uh, sentence that I noticed there is easing of regulatory requirements in order to make this happen, in, or you know easing of. Everything. I can't remember the exact. Uh, I can look it up, and I can't remember the exact terminology. But there's quite a bit of how to how to make that happen more easily. So the goal of the housing board and the town board was that we wanted to make it easier for affordable housing to 
um, we wanted to facilitate that with right. ADUs, make, you know, giving more opportunities for um, individual homeowners to be able to capitalize on you know, opportunities to provide informal, as we have organically yeah. provided informal housing, but to make it even easier. So where we can, we're trying to uh, enlist the help of AKRF to help us find opportunities within our existing co code to make those changes and they're meant as a broad brush to keep the density in the hamlets consistent with the comprehensive plan and in the areas where it's walkable that's always been a goal of this town and a goal of this community so that's where the focus is and that's where we're trying to make that happen more easily except that the focus uh, can't be that because as it keeps saying there's there's still no sewer um, in any of the any of the hamlets in the town and therefore those can't be developed and that's why we're looking at that dd uh, what it's called ddso site you know as long as the as long as the there's no sewer system in town those possibilities around the you know, increasing the density around the, around yeah. the town isn't, po isn't possible. So my next question is, why is that sort of skipped over? And why is it that when these mun municipal grants were uh, um, announced a few weeks ago, a month or two ago, Amenia didn't, ha didn't ask for any grants for, for the uh, uh, water um, uh, uh, the Talking about the wastewater structure, which, uh, whereas the county gave several hundred thousand dollars to other municipalities for that, for water infrastructure. Um, so I think that's sort of well, Char <laughs> Charlie happens to be who's Charlie Miller, who's sitting right in front of you, happens to be the chair of the wastewater committee and the housing board. Yeah. So he probably can answer that say, better than the so rest. So that's weird that you're speaking about, and you might be talking about Miller Roy. Um, to go to the microphone. Please go to the microphone. Um, well, I wanted to just like, I almost want to hug her. But, um, <laughs> no, the, Ask so that's, first. That's the, um, the WIA grant is a very good question. Um, so it's the New York State uh, Water uh, Investment Infrastructure Act. Um, its application was due in August, September. And for wastewater, we can't do that without forming a district. So you have to have a district to be able to form that. Um, for the drinking water, um, drinking water does uh, have <clears throat> most of their ducks in the road to actually apply for grants underneath that. But um, they weren't ready to do so at the time. So we are hoping that the wastewater district, the sewer district, will be formed by next go around. But I will say that um, we are on the intended use plan for the state, which is really where the vast majority of money you get. Both the, water, the drinking water district and the proposed wastewater district are on the, the, that list. So, um, Millager Northeast did get $100,000, but that's because they combined, well, it's because they um, were able to do, um, you could put two towns together, um, and that's how they did that. $200,000. I know, I know, but, and it's pretty remarkable, but, you know, unfortunately, um, Wasaic is a, a village of ours, so a hamlet, rather. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for explaining, but um, anyway, it's, it's, it's it, we're changing a lot of, we're changing some things in the, my, my point was, but thank you, is that we're changing a lot in the comprehensive plan, but not really addressing that as yet. So, you know, is this the time to change all that? No, so my no, last oh, go ahead. question, I think, um, is, um, uh, there's about soil mining, there's a, a sentence that was put in about soil mining, um, a new sentence. I don't know if that means that the that the zoning, the overlay district, is going to change. I didn't notice that. I'm sorry about soil mining. I mean, again, so there is a no. new, what? new sentence. I don't think so. The just soil mining. Go, um, go ahead. Please let um, Ashley have the microphone and so she can address that. Yeah, and then I have the last question. The last time the town updated the comprehensive plan, they did the zoning at the same time. So a lot of the recommendations that were in the comprehensive plan were then 
pretty immediately adopted. So one of the things that we did in this document is we updated the tense of those sections and clarified all of the different zoning districts that were changed in response to the comprehensive plan. So now it reads that these are in the code and they should stay and adds a little bit of detail of what ended up in the code. Well, what changed? Nothing. So, so nothing changed. The tents. Nothing changed. Nothing changed. It just acknowledged that the recommendations that were in the 2007 comprehensive plan in regards to soil mining were adopted and placed into the current zoning code and recommends that those regulations stay exactly the same. Can you read it? Because I remember seeing something about um, allowing land, uh, landowners to I don't recall. I think that was the existing language that I'll, was not. I'll double, I'll double check that, uh, right. but it's, that's. It's not in, I mean, what's in red doesn't, I mean, I'm looking at it and it doesn't say that. Um, it says balancing the factors, the town zoning code provides for soil mining overlay districts. That's how it starts and the purpose of which is to provide environmentally appropriate locations for soil mining to occur where landowners can achieve a reasonable return on their land. That's verbatim. Um, yeah. Sand and gravel without adversely yeah. impacting neighbors. Right, so that's why it was in red. It's it's because it's being, changed. it's being changed, as you said. Yeah, well that's a big it's, it's being changed it to match how it's worded in your current zoning code, so mm -hmm. if, if if there's a change there, well, we can go back and double check that language. Um, um, let me let me say something, which is that um, there's no sinister motives involved in this. That we've been working for a number of years, three years, um, to try to encourage affordable housing in town. That Ashley kind of went above and beyond um, in terms of trying to kind of clean up things that were out of date. For instance, Silo Ridge wasn't built yet, so she corrected the, the tense on that. Um, you know. um, please don't shout out. People don't know what you're saying. Oh, do you want to get to the mic? Sure. Yeah, that would be good. Okay. We need oh, to, all right. Well, you didn't. You this is a record. public hearing, but it's one person at one person at a time so speaking. I'd like to suggest that you let everyone who has a statement make it and then have questions. Otherwise, those of us with statements are going to be waiting and waiting, and we won't have a chance. Well, I don't know why you wouldn't have a chance because I'm not closing the public hearing until everyone speaks. There's no time limit on, to, on public hearings. There never has been and there's not going to be tonight. Can I finish with that? Yeah, can yes, you I can. can. Just answer one of so your let uh, let Ashley questions. finish first, I'm please. Happy to give it back. Um, so the reason that everything is only updated to 2020 is because that's the most current census data available, but you raised a really good point about the pandemic and we can address that qualitatively. Thank you. Um, and my, uh, so the, the, uh, uh, to go back to affordable housing, I, I think I have two questions. One about the, easing the regulatory requirements and two, uh, you make a point about um, there being a very large percent, rel relatively large percentage of rental units in Amenia uh, compared to the rest of Dutchess County. I think it's 40% versus 27%, something like that. But then you say that this affordable housing should be rental my question is why, you know, why not? Um, I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, Laurence, because that we've, I mean, this has gone through a lot of, I, I, no, 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 no. But don't, uh, don't accuse, I'm not trying to make Well, I, I just want to say that the, the housing board did a survey a year and a half ago to find out what people were wanted in terms of housing. And a lot of people wanted to own a house to sort of, you know, so that they had some capital invested. And uh, we were thinking mostly rentals, but a number of people want, were specifically looking for that. And we, we need to do a mix of all of those things. Okay, um, and the housing board has always been really strongly committed to developing um, the hamlets because uh, especially for Amenia, there's not enough foot traffic to support businesses. Um, people can't walk to things. Senior citizens don't have any place to move to. I mean, we've, we've talked through all this stuff, but the uh, the comprehensive plan and the, the zoning changes are a kind of a, uh, uh, 
a kind of dry distillation of what we've talked about. And if there's anything in there that that appears to um, uh, direct the effort somewhere you think they shouldn't, I mean, then definitely let us know because I, that's not the intent. Yeah, no, I, I think it's a great, uh, you know, a, a great um, uh, in initiative. I just question why, the, why not more? Why, why, why go to only rentals? And by, and by the way, another thing that hasn't been brought up in the in the stats is um, Airbnb um, rentals, mm -hmm. yeah. which also take away from housing in in this area. Uh, starting to, I mean, it's very much has been in the past couple of years, in taking away housing in this area. Um, and my just my last question is: Can we? Uh, can I address any any other small little um, notes to you? Um, thank you. That's all. Thank you. Now, does anyone else want to make a comment? Sharon. Go ahead. So following up on the Rawls's mention of Airbnbs, I'm sure everybody on the board and probably everybody in this room knows that the town of Washington just went through um, a strategic comprehensive plan update specifically to address hospitality. And hospitality is not affordable housing, but it's development of um, you know, hotel rooms, and, but also Airbnb. And my understanding is that um, they believe that there's significant tax revenue opportunities in regulating Airbnb. So if we're going to do a comprehensive plan update, I assume it's not something you do for every issue. It was opened up because of affordable housing. Um, it looks like you chose to add to that something about solar fields. But if you're going to have a comprehensive plan update, it seems like you also want to be considering regulating Airbnbs. And as Laurent said, um, not only are you regulating for tax reasons, but th in many, many communities, that is a source of uh, a, a place where houses are taken off the market. And often it's affordable houses taken off the market uh, by people who just rent them out. So I would encourage the whole process um, to maybe take one step back and to think about the broad question of hospitality and specific Airbnbs for the purpose of raising tax revenues, to do one comprehensive plan update and not address this next year, and then also for the possibility of freeing up you know, housing by regulating the number of Airbnbs we can have in the town, um, which will also alleviate a little bit of the um, affordable housing problem. Children. It's actually a okay. Yes, yeah, so you're all raising excellent points. And on the bottom of page 13 was added, it is also important that the growing tourism economy and weekender population does not displace existing residents. Throughout the country, vacation communities are finding that short-term rental market is consuming the local housing supply and pricing out long-time residents and workers. The town of Amenia should consider a short-term rental regulations to help preserve existing entry-level rental and for-sale homes for local residents and workers. Thanks. Christy? Hi. I appreciate all the work that um, everybody's doing on the board and on the committees to make our town a better place and especially to make it possible for working people to find appropriate housing. Um, and I would just like to request that um, before the next hearing that the draft be ready um, for for the public to download and read before, it was. I think it was less than 24 hours that it was available and so mm -hmm. I think that that produces a uh, situation where people are upset because they don't have enough time to spend with the document that they care about. So um, thank you. Yep. Okay. Nina? So yeah, I'll echo what Christy said. Thanks for all the hard work that everybody's been doing on this. Um, I think it became clear tonight that the reason why the comprehensive plan amendments are proposed is to um, is because the town is initiating some zoning code provisions and they need to be necessarily in lockstep. 
Um, I think given how much time and effort went into the comprehensive planning process last time and how much robust public engagement there was and how many people were involved and how much thought went into a, what is supposed to be a long-term planning document um, for the town that sets new goals and objectives and that reevaluates the direction that we want to go, um, that perhaps those two can be severed and the two processes for the zoning adoption and the comprehensive plan can be severed because it doesn't appear that the current comprehensive plan has anything that's in contravention to the zoning code changes. So that could presumably proceed on its own track. And then the town could have an opportunity to actually look at the comprehensive plan and the goals and objectives that are in there and, and, and reevaluate where we are um, and where we want to go instead of just updating little bits and pieces. I think something like that that had a much more involved cooperative process would be very beneficial to the town overall. And like I said, I don't think it would prevent the town from moving forward with adopting the affordable housing uh, zoning changes at all. I mean, unless there's something in there specifically that um, we weren't able to find, I wasn't able to find, um, there's no reason why you can't proceed in two separate paths. So I would just ask that the town board consider that as an option. I think Ashley should reply to that in that she has more technical expertise than we do. I, it was my re recollection is that our lawyer thought that we would go more conservatively and just cross every T and I and assume that somebody's going to sue us and that we are just being extremely conservative. Ashley, does that mirror your understanding or am I well, off track? my conversations with the town attorney. Okay, it's our attorney's recommendation that we just go the extra yard. Go ahead, Sharon. Good evening. My name is Sharon Kroger. <clears throat> I live in Leedsville, and I have a, a general store in Wasaic. Reviewing the master plan and the comprehensive plan is a serious business. It, if it happens every 10 years, it needs to be viewed as something comprehensive and carefully. And uh, What's happened is, all of a sudden, we're told there's a draft, we must speak to it tonight, and you're going to make decisions based on that. So no. there has perhaps been a misunderstanding, but our problem is, we remember a planning process that was substantial, and we think that there should be a, a broad overview of the plan if you're really going to do a rewrite or a, 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 a set of changes. Uh, really what you want is the thoughtful people in town, the people with inputs and ideas and facts that need to be understood. You need them to be able to talk to the people who are doing the writing and the analysis. So there's real communication. And right after a pandemic when nobody's been able to talk to each other or be in a room, isn't a good time to say, okay, have a couple of comments and let's make all these, what appear to be major changes. Uh, now, I'm not suggesting that we should all <laughs> do what we did in the ancient time when we could have 200 people in the golf clubhouse at the golf course and everyone was involved deeply. Uh, that's not what I'm suggesting. But I think that you can't uh, expect uh, a town to give up a plan which is as carefully done as this one and make changes that are um, not balanced. In other words, the enthusiasm of the, the housing folks who have done a lot of good homework and I didn't see any problems in there, frankly, about the housing part. But to run ahead with that, with when we're not going to review this, if we're going to do a, a, an overview and a rewrite and, and a, a true review, mm -hmm. it's not going to happen again for another 10 years. We'd better be careful that we get it systematic. And I think this is part of what's bothered everybody. I did a full, quick reading of it last night. And uh, in all honesty, there are so many things that need to be addressed. Mm -hmm. uh, the things that have been left out problems that need to be solved. And so, so 
to just say, okay, we've done a lot of homework in housing and, and here is the result. That, that's, that's uh, I mean, it's understandable and, and it's, it, it's creative work and it's good, but we, we have to catch up with you. And I think if this is going to be a review, it's got to have more due process. In fact, it probably isn't legal if you would have made a decision based on this, this type of a hearing, which couldn't really happen properly. Um, I'm, uh, uh, I have a comment for the public. Um, as a public service, um, I will have at the general store copies of this plan, draft plan available to the public if they want to come see them or to take them out and study them and bring them back so that people have a chance over time to understand what's going on and to be able to make the inputs that they may wish to make. Is there any other public comment? Regarding, can I respond to Sharon? Certainly. Thank you, um, uh, Sharon. The, um, you know, I think you're correct that the housing board has been pretty aggressive in trying to get this done quickly because, you know, we had a crisis before COVID. We had a crisis when the, you know, things were bad when the original 2007 plan was written, and we haven't done anything since then. And as you know, Amenia well, you know that the only housing that's been built is super luxury housing. There's no starter houses. There's nothing for middle class people. And so we were very anxious to have an opportunity to, uh, you know, restore that balance. And so I think that um, uh, in our enthusiasm, we had originally just asked to change the zoning and our attorney uh, insisted we touch the comprehensive plan and maybe we need a second opinion on that because um, I have spoken to several people and not everyone agrees. I mean, the comprehensive plan that we have, which was very forward thinking in 2007, raises all these issues about housing. So if we're trying to change the zoning around housing, it's all, everything that's in the comprehensive plan already says we want more housing. So we just have to find that out. Um, because uh, unfortunately the town attorney isn't here tonight, but um, the, the, the housing board wanted to do the least they could do to make a few changes um, to make it easier to build affordable housing. And also, if developers uh, refuse to build affordable housing for a big development, that they pay a reasonable amount of money in lieu of building it. Um, there's, there's not really that many moving parts in the, in the zoning changes we'd like to make. Because of time, I didn't go through the long list of things that need to be reviewed and the problems that need to be solved, because I didn't think that was appropriate in this, in this setting, but I'm hoping you're going to be scheduling uh, opportunities for ideas to flow and for people to, to participate and so that they can, the public can be involved and there'll be some due process. And at that point, we'll raise these other issues appropriately. Well, we have talked about the fact that our comprehensive plan is kind of beyond the typical shelf date for a comprehensive plan, and that we actually do need to do that. But it's expensive and it's time consuming, and we didn't want that to, we wanted to see if we could make the changes for affordable housing without having to, you know, take two years and $200,000 to to do that. Are you sure that you're uh, could you please oh. go to the microphone, Sharon? So much stuff here. All right, you've 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 raised this now. I have to ask it. Are you sure your legal people are right that you have to have a full review and uh, 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 of the whole master plan in order to get the things? That to isn't do? what he told us. What I he told? No, he did not. What he, our legal. What our town attorney told us is that if you make zoning changes, then they need to also, you need to also have those changes in the comprehensive plan, that there needs a, there, they need to match each other. That's what he said. He didn't say we had to do the whole plan and it had, because we're, we're trying, one of the things for the housing committee is um, wanted to have a KRF have and a planning is to look at zoning changes we could make to make affordable housing more reality in Amenia. 
But what the town attorney said is that whatever you changed in their zoning, you should also make um, the, speci the specific changes in the comprehensive plan. We're not talking about a total comprehensive plan review. We're talking about the zoning changes matching what says in the comprehensive plan so that there, you know, there aren't any questions or there aren't any legal issues to come up so that they, um, so that they, they match each other. He probably thought they might come up and they, they haven't so far as I could see, but I, I, I would think we would need more consultation than just one man's opinion if it's going to upset everything. Thirdly, I, I think that um, this need not cost a huge amount of money. You have enough planning skills and, and, and uh, thoughtful participants in this town to get a lot of work done without having to hire outside consultants. I mean, you have the consultants you need. So They were outside consultants last time, Sharon. I well, was I'm not actually, talking about actually. repeating last time. I'm saying you could do shortcuts, but you have to do it creatively and have the opportunities for the inputs. Well, I mean, we would rather do it with someone who has the experience and the, and, and the knowledge to be able to do it right. And we acknowledge that it does need to be updated. I mean, that we do well, need to be a comprehensive in that case, update. In that case, I want to suggest to you that the firm that is advising Dover has in it some of the important skills uh, in this direction that could be used for consultant, along with whatever other lawyers you choose to use. I'm afraid that George Rodenhausen is no longer available to us, but these are people that he worked with and taught. Is there any other comment? To go to the microphone, please. Can I just know what the zoning rules that you are changing will be? Um, I'm going to let Charlie do that, unless Ashley. <laughs> <laughs> Proposed changes. Proposed yeah. changes. So we, we do have a draft. I, I don't know if this draft is posted on the website yet, but if it's not, um, it certainly can be posted. Um, there are proposed changes to Chapter 121, Article 3, Land Use District Regulations, uh, Section 120. Uh, it's changing the minimum floor area of a dwelling unit to be compliant with the building codes of the state of New York as opposed to having a set floor. Right now you have a minimum of 800 square feet and a, a, for a, a single family home and an accessory apartment at 500 feet. So this is le letting that uh, drop to the building code requirements. Uh, there's a pro what, what is it dropping to? The state building code requirements. Which is? Which is, um, it depends on the type of dwelling that you're speaking of, but it could be as low as, I don't want to misspeak, but I believe it's around 350 square feet. But I, I want to double check that. Um, for an accessory, not for an apartment, yeah, for an apartment. Studio. And what that does is it allows you in a, in a single family home, if you wanted to carve off a unit uh, within your home, um, it gives you a little bit more flexibility in, in having a smaller size unit. Uh, and in terms of any type of accessory dwelling unit, it obviously would need to comply with all applicable health code requirements, making sure that you have adequate septic and well. There's proposed changes to the multiple and accessory dwelling laws. So um, not, one of the things we're proposing to add is previously there were some rules about conversions and we're pro proposing to add nothing in this provision so preclude the inclusion of an addition or new structure to accommodate additional units in compliance with the density and dimensional standards of the applicable zoning district. So what that means is as long as it complies with the zoning district, if you wanted to add an attached garage with an apartment, you could do that. As long as the health codes. Yes, yes, so it needs to meet all of the health codes. That's the problem, because the health department, sorry, the health department is not allowing people to add an ADU onto an existing um, septic system, even though it's an older person who may have lost a husband or a wife, and it's not as much in use, but they're not allowing for that. 
Yeah, so the state requirements are based on bedrooms, so it's based on the potential number of people that could live there. Unfortunately, that's not something that we can change at the local level. That's something that we need to change in, in I believe, in county or state. That, that's a huge problem. Because we all have space. We get out of place, but if you can't have a septic system, if you can't use your existing septic, septic system, it's very costly to add that in. Mm -hmm. So, um, and, and we talked about this right around the other housing board. Right? Yes. Sure. Uh, so some of the other proposed changes are to the parking requirements, um, reducing them a little bit, uh, because parking can be a, bar uh, a barrier to the construction of new affordable housing. Um, in the workforce housing section, uh, adding a, a provision that all development applications shall be referred to the housing board for review in accordance with the requirements of the standards set forth in 121-42. One of the things that came out of our review with the housing board was that the role of the housing board wasn't clearly defined and in some ways it, it didn't seem as applicable to you know, how it would fit in the, in the review process. So it, it gave the housing board a lot of review authority over specific um, development applications and you know making sure that the people that were moving into those buildings were compliant with the the rules mm -hmm. in terms of their income requirements uh, what's what typically happens though is is the developer will hire a mm -hmm. not-for-profit uh, affordable housing consultant that will be the ones who monitor the waiting list to make sure that everybody's meeting their affordability guidelines and then they report to the housing board on an annual basis so the code's been revised to have that type of a format Um, there were some consistency changes to reflect the reduction in uh, square footage to the code, uh, building code requirement. There were some clarifications to how you would determine um, applicant eligibility. One of the things that we did remove were some of the preference requirement or preference list. Uh, there are some concerns that having extensive preference lists like you have in your code right now can violate uh, fair housing laws. So. A lot. Uh, so the, the existing law um, gives preference to emergency workers, veterans, uh, people employed within the town of Armenia in terms of who gets first on the waiting list to get into the housing. Um, those have been popular in the past, but, but communities are looking to remove those because of fair housing concerns. Uh, it, it just updates some of the occupancy requirements. Uh, it addresses the, let's see, a lot of it is carried forward from the way it had previously been written in the code and we've just reorganized it to make sense with the new structure. Um, it's clarified the process of going through site plan and special permit approval. Um, defines what a management company is and how that would be selected. That would be selected uh, based on, well, the, the potential developer would recommend someone, but that person would have to be vetted by the housing board. Um, it explains how the workforce housing would be monitored. And we'll be putting that draft yes. on the website. Yes, uh, um, this draft will be on the website, yeah. and there will be a separate public hearing on this draft specifically. And um, just to clarify, you know where we are in the process tonight. I did hear some concerns that the red line copy wasn't available on the website. Um, the red line copy is really a working draft. This meeting today was really to announce that this project is going on, to get your initial feedback, to explain the process, where we are in the process. So this is really the kickoff. It's the first of two required public hearings by state law. Um, the second public hearing, you will certainly have a full draft of the document available well in advance of that public hearing. And that's where you'll have uh, the opportunity to comment on more of the specifics that are included in the update. Well, we're relying on our board to make sure that the other inputs, other than housing, get the chance to, if you're going to, if the town board is going to make a, a major 10-year change, then we all have to get these other things input into you 
There will be plenty. They will be. She just announced we're going to have more public hearings, Sharon. This is not the one and done. I'm just talking about the she said hearings. Once. I'm talking about the interactive discussions that need to happen in order to write changes that need to be made. Sharon, again, we're we do need to do an update of our entire comp comprehensive plan and our zoning, but we wanted to not sacrifice the desperate need for affordable housing until we can get around to doing that because that is not a quick process. I was here the last time it was done. And when the comprehensive plan gets rewritten, there will be a very broad public process. The things that we're changing in the, uh, in the zoning um, uh, are, are really not, I mean, there's very little in there that I can even imagine would be controversial. What? Well, that's what Most towns do the whole comprehensive plan every 10 years or earlier or later. Um, what we have chose to do is to, in order to make affordable housing or workforce housing a reality in Amenia, we chose to do a portion of the comprehensive plan in order to make this happen. And in, in, in addition, changing to the zoning laws so that they would both um, complement each other. Well, you can sit here and talk about doing the whole comprehensive plan to the cows come home, but we're not going to do that. We are going to do the zoning and the part of the comprehensive plan that's related to affordable housing at this time. Can we do more of the comprehensive plan next year? We certainly can. We can make a plan to, um, to do whatever needs to be done to upgrade the comprehensive plan. But what we've chosen to do now is to focus on affordable housing so that we can make that a reality for people in Amenia. So that is what we're planning to do. So you're willing to do it like next year to talk about the historical preservation parts and all those other complex parts. But this year, just focus on the housing. I mean, that's a rational position. Yes, that's what we're doing. That's what we're trying to do. Charlie, do you want to say something yeah. since you're the chair? I want to make just like one little statement. I think to the, um, the distribution of the red line version, I think, has been a little, we stumbled a little on that. Um, and this was supposed to be the opening of public comment, um, which will last for, I think, about two months, you know. Um, I will say, when you go through the document, in my opinion, it really is 90 to 99 percent of, 90 to 95 percent of it is statistics. Statistics were left out of the last plan. I think in me reading through it, it actually illuminates the thing the, the goals that were, that were and still are in the comprehensive plan, how some of them were met, many of them weren't. I think seeing statistics around what our incomes are in this town, very important. The breakout of um, the age groups of the town, the, where they work, you know, where they live, I think is, and it all feeds into um, the affordable housing zoning uh, proposals that we're making that will be um, distributed shortly as well. One thing that um, uh, Ashley did mention that is in the, the zoning changes that we're looking to make is the change in the fee in lieu of for um, developers. So Silo Ridge, they opted not to build affordable housing. That's er almost every town that has requirements for developments that are a certain number and more. Um, either the developer can you know, build the affordable workforce housing or they can pay a fee. Um, the fee that we currently have in our code is extraordinarily low. It is so inconsequential. Um, this uh, AKRF has proposed 
uh, a dynamic fee that um, is uh, 1.25 of um, the Duchess area median income. And so when that median income goes up, that fee goes up because that never changes. I think that's very important. Um, there's also some density language that our current zoning code, this is outside the comprehensive plan, but it's not very clear that if you are putting workforce housing someplace, you should get a density bonus if you're in Hamlet residential, Hamlet mixed use. But I think the vast majority of the frustration that I'm hearing at this meeting is more about like reading what's ultimately been just updated and revised because I don't think it is that significant. And we as a town got a really great deal on doing those updates with AKRF and their work for the zoning. People can shake their head, but it's a very expensive and long process to do a complete redo of the comprehensive plan. Our comprehensive plan is good. It's, you know, it was very forward thinking when it was done and nothing's really changing about that. Um, anyway, that's mine. Well, there are some problems that should be fixed. Um, could you please go to the microphone? I think there are going to be some citizens committees working on this regardless, but it's possible that they might be able to come up with some suggestions that would fit in without turmoil. And if they can, I think it should be included in an attempt at comprehensiveness. Because we... It, I'm not sure what you're saying. Sure, this is... Fine. All right, I'll give you an example. A, a, there's a problem, okay? You, you can visualize this. Large trucks carrying livestock come barreling down Niblo Hill Road into the intersection at Amenia Union and there are no signage, there's no signage to help them understand the problem that they have for themselves and they're creating for the rest of us. Now, there are some sections of the plan where corrections and um, uh, problem solving could be included along with your housing priorities. Sharon, the, the reason that we didn't want to do that is because your issue of trucks, there will be, you know, 30 or 40 or 50 or 100 other individual issues and we would never be able to you, fix you, the, you misunderstand me. I'm talking about a stop sign so that they don't... They that don't, doesn't require zoning. That's a that's Well, a it, invo issue. it involves some of the, some of the signage needs to be seen as, as a comprehensive problem. And I don't think it's that hard to have some committees working on this while you're doing your housing. In order to come out, because you're going to make, you're gonna make a, a, a full comprehensive uh, change. We're trying, I mean. Or, or would you just prefer that none of these other issues come up unless, until you get the housing finished? Yes, that was what we were trying to do. We wanted to, yeah. we wanted to deal with the housing issue so it could be done sooner rather than later, and then we know we need to look at the comprehensive. But what about urgent property. problems? You're going to ignore problems. them. Well, I mean, if you're talking about a stop sign, the the, the highway superintendent. There wasn't that. one, but our, our, someone put one up, but it is a synthetic one. In other words, it's not official. But it's doing a job. I think we're getting away from the public hearing. Well, the public, the this public is, hearing is on affordable housing update for the comprehensive plan. The question is, what scope is this going to have? And, and I think you've clarified that to some extent. And you're saying maybe the rest of these issues should wait. Laurence has her hand up. Did you want to speak? Go ahead. Um, when uh, I go away for the winter, I go to a town that's lost 40% of its workforce housing to Airbnb. Little cottages that were inexpensive places for teachers or bartenders to live are now all rented out by the night or the week. And the town has decided to put a halt to that because the workforce has had to leave town and go somewhere else. And I think it's one way to maybe save a little bit of the workforce housing that exists before that might happen uh, in our area. Thank you. Thanks. Yes, please. Uh, so, um, 
so the, the original comprehensive plan included the over, uh, maps of the overlay district. I just want to make to understand whether those maps are going to change, and in particular, the map for the MCO overlay district. No, we're not doing any maps, no. right? No, we're, we're, we're not, not doing, doing any, any maps. maps. Done in red, the actual, I mean, the explanation of all those districts has been rewritten but the maps will remain as they are? Yes, yes. the maps are not Thank changing. You. I also wanted to say, Laurence, you raised something earlier about the, that we can't really build affordable housing anywhere. In fact, there is a property being developed north of town, um, uh, across the street from Fresh Town and a little bit south, that Hudson River Housing is working on, and they're going to put in their own wastewater facility and their own, uh, their own wells, um, and they're supposed to be 21 units of housing in seven buildings, if I recall. So that actually is happening independent of the wastewater system. But but Charlie is you know more uh, you know much more insistent even than me that um, we've got to get we've got to get a wastewater system. I mean, there's no doubt about that. But we want to get the rules in place for housing because the wastewater is not something that is controlled by the you know by the zoning code. Yes, could you go to the microphone, please? First, I also want to compliment the housing people for the incredible work that you've been doing on this. And I had no idea when I read this that it had to do with housing. Um, I think housing is crucial. I just have an issue about packaging it as a part of comprehensive plan. Mm -hmm. Um, I agree with Sharon, and you know, I think probably it's a long process to do comprehensive planning, but the history I understand of the town, there was a lot of care and concern that was put into it, and I don't think we should cheapen it uh, because we are in such urgent need of housing. I urge the, the board to check the lawyers again and see if there's a way in which to separate it out without calling this a comprehensive plan. Because after all, we have the silo ridge issues going on and circulating, all kinds of changes going on. People read documents, they're not sure why they're in there, the way they're in there. They're not sure why they're worded that way. Uh, and I'm one of those people that basically says, wait a minute, what is this about? And that is the kind of thing that we're going to run into if you present this as a comprehensive uh, plan. So I think the housing thing is absolutely crucial, and I urge you to find another way around it. You've been given advice that that's possible. I suggest you follow it up and then follow up with some kind of wiggle room about the comprehensive plan is still being looked at. Uh, we don't have to have the comprehensive plan to do the housing. And there's a committee that's working on the 10-year update. And just break these two apart. Because I think there's just too much going on, a lot of resentment going on about um, all of the silo reach stuff, and a lot of fear a lot of concern. Uh, I'll be speaking later in the public thing about the heavy trucks again. Um, so anyway, hard work on the, the housing thing and a laudable work. But I think it, it's going to get buried and then I think the comprehensive plan is going to be cheapened as, as a historical document that has been in the past. Is there any other comment? Um, I'd like to make a motion to continue to the public hearing so that everyone has a chance to read the draft zoning and the um, potential comprehensive plan updates. And we will continue on October 20th. I'll second that. At 7 p.m.? <clears throat> 7 p.m. Supervisor Perotti? Yes. Council Persons Doyle? Yes. Plackman? Yes. Bremelard? Yes. And I'd like to make a motion to return to regular meeting. 
I'll second that. Supervisor Perotti? Yes. Councilperson Doyle? Yes. Blackman? Yes. Rebelard? Yes. Okay, is there any other public comment other than affordable housing and comprehensive plan? Is this the open public? Yes, it is. Public comment? I do. Uh, Christy came before the board uh, on behalf of our letter that we have name. written, Megan, about the transportation issue and wanting to have a no through truck sign. There are four no through truck signs uh, in Armenia already and they were put up years ago evidently very casually. Uh, I don't understand why Megan has not gotten in touch with me um, and, uh, and us. Um, about the issue of using Sheffield Road as the shortcut from 343 to the Keene, uh, what's that called, Keene Horse, whatever. Yeah, Silo Ridge. Um, so, you know, we counted those trucks um, and we talked to the company that was coming from Salisbury. We followed them to Salisbury and we got the name of the trunking company and we called them up and said, you can't be doing this. And they said, oh, well, if you had up a sign that said no through trucks, then we wouldn't be doing it. Um, they have stopped for a while, but they've started up again. Um, it's just too easy to use our street um, as a shortcut. And our street is not safe, which was the other two things that we put in the letter that each of the board members got, that Meg got, that said basically that Sheffield is a blind turn from 343 into Sheffield because of the hill, and it's a blind turn to the left coming from town which Megan was, was happy to help me with when I first moved here because when you look left, anyone who visits us, we say, please make sure that you pull down as far as you can and look to your left as far as you can because the road, and this is not the city's prop, town's problem, this is a state design, there's a blind hole there and when weeds grow up, you cannot see the car coming. So what Megan did was she said, well, that's a state road, but I guess she must have called them. This was a few years ago. She got rocks put down. Christy and I, every year, not every year for Christy, she's too young. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we cut the, we use the weed whacker to make the, okay, so that's the blind coming out of Shep Hill and turning left. When you rise up from the rail trail, two through, 343, there's a rise, it's blind. If a person comes in 343, they will not see you. It's not a divided road, it's a very narrow road, and I want either to have a mirror on 343, shining on Sheffield, letting the person know coming up that that's a blind curve, or just a sign that says blind curve to the right, or blind on your right. Okay, just something, but I have gotten no answer. It's been a month. Got no response from Megan, no response from the board. There have been two accidents that they think, I think, Megan thinks, I think her father thinks, is due to no stop sign. So we've got this new sign on Sheffield that says stop ahead. Well, you can't tell whether it has to do with the rail trail or what it has to do with, but that's not the problem. The problem is the person coming down can't see to the left. The person turning right cannot see a car coming over the rise. So I would like an answer. Well, I'll follow up with Megan next week. Thank I don't you. think it's Megan. I think at this point it was the lawyer checking to see if it was possible to put a no through trucks. Therefore, in a meeting. So that's the very specific um, reasons why there are, I understood that other, other roads have limitations. There were others that were put up. They said, 
by accident or whatever, uh, but they need to know legally if that's okay to route trucks specifically to another route. So I think the lawyer was looking into it and we haven't heard back from him. That's what I was hoping to hear tonight. Okay. Hi, um, it's me again. Uh, yes, it's true, we do the weed whacking um, to make it safe for people to turn on that road. And with respect to this question about the no through truck sign, um, I went home and read the entire national manual for where signs are allowed, um, which uh, was referenced by Megan and by the lawyer. And there's actually no guidance about no through truck signs in that, which is interesting. Um, but there is some New York State guidance and there are some memos. Yes. There are some memos that have been released uh, as um, supposed updates to the national manual that um, give towns guidance as to um, understanding what they need uh, to control safety in their uh, districts and to make those decisions. So I would specifically like to know when we get the lawyer back here, um, you know, very specifically what laws they're referring to in terms of understanding whether those signs are allowed and why it wouldn't be allowed on, on that street, which you can see on the map that Leo provided last time, um, does provide a shortcut <coughs> from uh, 343 to 22 to that building site that they were, that they were uh, I think, working on something for the rodeo. So anyway, my request is for specific um, guidance as to where in the law it states uh, whether we'll that's address it at the next meeting. Thank you. But it would be helpful in the interim if you can send the a link to the 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 piece of the code, the traffic code that I you do. looked at. Hmm. I do. Okay. do you leave personally, or is everybody on the board? I think everyone on the board would be good. Is um, you uh, there's other public comment? Yes. I'm Go sorry. ahead. <laughs> I know she's <laughs> sitting here chafing at the bit. I, I can see. Well, I received um, <laughs> one of our town residents stopped in the town clerk's uh, in the town hall today and has handed out to us a public comment. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and kind of summarize it up for us. Uh, is that on Railroad Avenue at 8:30 um, p.m. We happen to have had an incident on um, that involved a, a very large truck that was parked and idled for quite a long time um, for her. Um, it was 20, 25 minutes that it was idling there um, and it was bothering her with the noise and the, the main concern was the idling. So I'm sharing this just with the board. I'm not going to sit here and read the entire thing. I mean, she does thank me because I, I went up to the man and asked him to relocate the vehicle 8.30 at night. Um, so the two of them had a, a conflict <laughs> on the road and I <laughs> just happened to drive up upon it and I um, was able to assist. So, um, Sarah, I'm glad that it all worked out and I'm glad that the truck moved and I advised him where else he could go, not on our road. Um, but just, I guess, in general, um, you know, that was one of the, the points is bringing it up because she was aware of the, the, the large trucks on our small, because they're small, our town roads are not super wide and they're not lined, just trucks in general. And um, I remember years ago having the sign on Railroad Avenue because it was at the end. And I remember when I started it, at that some point it had disappeared, but Stan was super kind and added the uh, children at play sign. So I mean the no through traffics signs were up and around on our town roads years ago. The roads change and you know personnel changes and signs sometimes come down from accidents. So I mean, I can't say where the sign on Railroad Avenue went, but so it just kind of just following up. So she just wanted to touch base, and I told her I would share with her with the entire board her her comment. So it is an issue, not just Sheffield Railroad Avenue too. Is there any other public comment? That's all I have. Oh, sorry. Oh, do you have any more? <laughs> so um, uh, Charlie Miller, as the uh, chair of the uh, housing board. I wanted to make sure that everybody was aware we have a, um, an event on October 15th, so that's not this Saturday, but the following, 
10 o'clock at Town Hall. Um, homes are coming to Amenia that we can all afford. Um, it will be an event with us and Hudson River Housing, which is a, um, an affordable housing developer that has a, a parcel on 22 that Leo mentioned. Um, so we'll be discussing what potentially can go there, and we want to get a lot of community feedback. That will be one of several meetings that um, are forums that will be held. <clears throat> so that's next Saturday, 10 o'clock, Town Hall. And then as the, um, the Wastewater Committee Chairman, we have two upcoming community events regarding um, the Hamlet Sewer Feasibility Study. So the first, uh, the next one is um, Wednesday the 12th. So this coming Wednesday here at Town Hall, 7 p.m., it'll be an in-person meeting. We want people who are in the proposed district to come, who are maybe on the periphery of the district, to hear about what it's going to be or what it could be and give us your feedback. And then there's a virtual meeting um, that will be on the 18th. Um, that's that following Tuesday um, at 7 p.m. Um, and you can get that link either through our Facebook page. It's also, there's um, flyers around Town Hall um, and around town as well. So we want as much community feedback as we possibly can get for both the sewer feasibility study and for the uh, workforce housing um, development. Thank you. Is there any other public comment? Town clerk report. Um, I'd like to share with the board that the supervisor presented uh, to myself last Friday uh, the tentative budget and that tentative budget is prepared in our uh, books tonight so you do have a hard copy and earlier this evening prior to the meeting I did circulate it electronically so you have it in two versions. Um, and I do recall at your last meeting you guys uh, did go into an executive session to conduct interviews. Was there any um, uh, action that the board was looking to take as a result of that? executive session. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to make a motion to appoint Rhett Roback to the CAC. Second. Supervisor Prody? Yes. Council Persons Doyle? Yes. yes. Blackman? Ramblard? Yes. Thank you. And uh, that'll conclude my report for this evening. 69? Yes. <coughs> Uh, resolution authorizing third public hearing on franchise renewal agreement. Um, we're required to have it, uh, a third public hearing on the franchise renewal agreement um, because that's something the when um, Cablevision went to present their our agreement that we already passed to the Public Service Commission, they required that there be a, an additional public hearing. There's no changes to the agreement. We're just following um, a requirement by the Public Service Commission to have an additional public hearing. Authorizing a third public hearing on a franchise renewal agreement between the Town of Amenia and Cablevision Systems, Duchess Corporation. Whereas the Town of Amenia is a party to a franchise agreement with Cablevision Systems, Duchess Corporation to provide cable service via a cable system within the town of Amenia, whereas the town is considering a renewal of the cable franchise agreement in accordance with the federal regulations, the applicable provisions of the New York State Public Service Law and the rules and regulations of the Public Service Commission, and whereas prior to entering into a renewal of the cable franchise agreement, the town board is required to conduct a public hearing thereon whereas Cablevision submitted a proposed franchise renewal agreement to continue to operate a cable system within the town of Amenia and by resolution number 28 of 2020, a public hearing was held on July 2nd, 2020. And whereas the town board of Amenia obtained public input on issues including, but not limited to, past performance, equipment and facilities, franchise fee, public, educational and governmental access, service to schools and public buildings, right-of-way management and safety, consumer protection, and accountability standards and procedures. Whereas the Town Board of the Town of Amenia further negotiated the terms of the franchise renewal agreement based on the input received at the public hearing. Whereas Cablevision submitted a revised proposed franchise renewal agreement 
whereas the town board of the town of Menia conducted a public hearing on the revised franchise renewal agreement on December 16, 2021 at the town hall, town of Amenia 4988, Route 22, Amenia, New York 12501, at which time all parties and interests and citizens had an opportunity to be heard, whereas by resolution number 65 of 2021, the town board of the town of Amenia authorized the renewal of the cable franchise agreement with Cablevision Systems and Duchess Corporation, whereas the cable franchise agreement must be approved by the Public Service Commission prior to becoming effective. Whereas the Public Service Commission has suspended its certification process due to an issue with the publication of the notice of public hearing on the revised franchise renewal agreement. Whereas the town board of the town of Amenia is now required to conduct a third public hearing on the revised franchise agreement renewal agreement, a copy of which is annexed here too. Whereas the town board of the town of Amenia will conduct a public hearing on the revised franchise renewal agreement on November 3rd, 2022 at the town hall, town of Amenia, 4988 Route 22, Amenia, New York, 12501, at which time all parties and interests and citizens had an opportunity to be heard. Whereas the town board determines that the renewal of the cable franchise agreement is a type two action pursuant to 6NYCRR 617.5C and is otherwise exempt from environmental review pursuant to the New York State Environmental Quality Review Act. Now therefore be it resolved that the recitations above set forth are incorporated in this resolution as it fully set forth and adopted herein. The town board hereby schedules a public hearing to be held on November 3rd, 2022 at 7 p.m. at Town Hall, Town of Amenia, 4988 Route 22, Amenia, New York, 12501, at which time all parties and interests and citizens shall have an opportunity to be heard. The town clerk is hereby directed to publish and post the notice of public hearing in the form annexed here to at least five days prior to the scheduled public hearing and post same on the town's website and official sign board maintained by the town clerk. Can I make that motion? Second. Supervisor Prody? Yes. Council Persons Doyle? Yes. Blackman? Yes. Beverly? Yes. Okay, other matters. Um, we have, um, You've been given a copy of the tentative budget. Actually, the tentative budget is the wish list from all the departments. And it's our worksheet where we work on that to um, get to the preliminary budget and eventually an adopted budget. So I would need an, uh, to know if there's a time and day of next week where you can where we can meet and actually meet with some of the departments. Okay. Let's see. Uh, what time of day would you like to do this, Victoria? Well, what time is best? Some people are working. Yes, some people are working. What time is better for you? Um, any time, like 5.30 is, is um, I have. Six o'clock, would that work? Um, so are we talking about what day of the week are we talking? I don't know, um, that's what I need <laughs> you to tell me. Because Tuesdays and Thursdays, I'm typically not available um, until I would say seven. Uh, that's a, uh, I, I, that limits a lot. Uh, then it looks like Wednesday the 12th is a wastewater activity. Yeah, and rec committee. And rec. Um, <laughs> so we're talking, is mo uh, Tuesday the 11th, is there anything that night? Oh, I have physical therapy. I, I really am going to have a hard time. Is next Friday going to work? or Friday mm. would work. Fridays that are would be a available. problem for me. Friday the 14th. Friday is the 15th. No, Saturday is the, uh, the 14th. Wait a minute. Oh, I'm sorry. It's the 14th. You're right. 14th looks like it is available at 5.30. What about you guys? Yep. I mean, that works for me. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, Brad is going to be more exciting, but mm -hmm. okay. 5.30 on Friday the 14th. I'll okay. be at my conference. 
Well, Erica could do it. You can ask her. I can't commit to having someone else. So if somebody yeah. else wants to record okay. the meeting. What committees do you want to meet with? Because it is a Friday. At a well, building. Um, so Friday's the only day you guys can meet? Um, what about Monday? Monday's Columbus Day, but... Monday's what? Columbus Day, Monday but I guess I could Columbus do that. Columbus Day, but I could still do it. I um, don't think... I could do Monday the 10th. Or Indigenous People day, People's Day, depending on your, you know... Yeah, I was... That's not a to do something, but holiday I for... So we could make it for 5.30 on Monday. I'm working that day too, so. But I could do it in the. Um, I could do. I could do it in the, uh, yeah, Monday I could do it in the, in the early Brad. evening. 5.30? 5.30 Monday. Okay. So are we doing Friday and Monday? Monday and Friday? Well, we can do Monday and see we're not going to be meeting with all the departments, but just a couple of the departments. Okay. Probably building and... Um, will you be available Monday? Okay. Then town clerk and tax collector. And possibly the assessor. Oh, uh, the S, actually not the assessor, um, probably recreation. Monday the 10th, right? Monday the 10th, yeah, I think that's right. So we'd need to schedule recreation, building, and then um, town clerk and tax collector. Okay, at 5.30 on Monday. And I'll, um, I'll make sure it's, um, I do the publication of it. Town board comments? Um, I have one, um, which is, well, it's probably more than one, but I'll, let's say there's one, um, which is I attended the Zoning Board of Appeals uh, recently, and some of the topics I thought clearly the town board ought to be aware of. Um, so I'm requesting that before our reorg meeting um, next time that we discuss the assignment of board liaisons. Um, to report back to the board on what's going on on the CBA and the planning board. Well, when, when we do the reorganization, we can... Reorg? We can just do that? You can, you can just let me know oh. where you want to be, okay. what you want to be liaisons to. Okay. Yeah, I don't... It's just uh, not on the list now, so... Yeah, well, I don't arbitrarily say you go here and you go there. Okay. Just usually we just put the people where, you know, where they've historically been. Sure. But if, if you have... Um, you know, our preference, I, so you just need to let Nancy know. Yeah, that's fine. No, I just meant that right now we don't have a liaison to zoning or to planning, and I thought that we should. Okay, that's well, we can, we can add that. I know okay. there are some towns that have liaisons to all the departments. Okay, wow. But right. um, I think having one for planning and zoning, you know, would be a good idea. Yeah, I do too. Yeah, we can do that if the board so chooses. Okay. Oh, and I just, uh, the other things that I wanted to say is I wanted to thank Vicki and Christy Gast for completing the, uh, the grant application for the uh, electric vehicle Stacey, station. Right? Mm -hmm. Charging station? Yeah. And um, I wanted to thank both Wastewater and the Housing Board mm -hmm. and Charlie specifically for setting up so many means of informing Amenia residents about their progress. Are there any That's other it. town board comments? Um, I uh, wanted to elaborate a little bit on that grant application that um, the CAC spearheaded with um, Stacy Mantle's um, uh, efforts, is that it, it was to the DEC and it was uh, it requesting funds to help us install a charge point two-port level two charging station on the town-owned parcel that is adjacent, ex abuts the New York State Park's existing parking lot on Mechanic Street. So if you know the intersection, or you know the rail trailhead, 
on Mechanic Street for the rail trail. You could theoretically, if we got this grant and you had an electric car, you could charge your car while you were um, at the rail trail or go into town and walk into town and enjoy uh, the town amenities. So I, I do hope that that is, um, is accepted and that we can move forward with that because I think it, is a, it would be a really great strategic place. Uh, we asked for two years of free charging and that would might be the kind of incentive that um, would allow people, to, I know electric cars are expensive, but it might be a further incentive to know that you don't have to pay for gas and you have clean emissions and you're helping the New York State um, achieve its, um, its um, clean energy goals. The other thing I wanted to announce is that the free theater arts program is going to be starting uh, on Saturday uh, at the Amenia Town Hall uh, Auditorium and it's noon to 2 p.m. and it's available to third grade through high school students and it will be taught by Heather Hollihan Gurneri and her um, assistant. Um, and that's, that's the main thing. I am going to be talking to Stephanie Radon who, I have talked to Stephanie Radon um, about two trees in Wasik that are going to need to be um, taken down is her recommendation that both the Christmas tree that we have across from the Lantern Inn is um, diseased beyond repair and needs to be taken down and the other one is the maple tree which has historically had interference with the flagpole so uh, both are are deteriorating and will not uh, cannot be saved so she has recommendations and we will have those two trees taken down. And Are you working else. with Megan on that, right? Megan with Lee's trees? Other, uh, other um, priorities at this time. So, but um, I think I can go ahead and call Lee's trees on. Yeah, the go ahead and call them and schedule it. And schedule that, and then we can. I can forward to you Stephanie's recommendations for another conifer that would be appropriate for that site. Okay. Start getting some. And then we'll replace it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If you want to go ahead and do that, that would be good. Yeah. Thank you. That's all I have. Okay. Are there any other town board comments? Yeah, uh, Vicky. I was looking at the lily pad EV um, quote. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sorry. The what quote? The quote for the EV, EV station. Oh, for the EV station, sorry. Uh, yeah, the company is. And is this the only quote that we have right now? Um, it's a reimbursement grant. So uh, at this point, it's just a, um, a request, and then we would have to go out to RFP if we didn't, in fact, get the, okay. the grant. So, so this is just a placeholder. It, to get us the grant? The idea is, for, on my point of view, uh, and what I was told by technical assistance, is that you should ask for as much as you think you could possibly, possibly need, and that if you're awarded, you know, you obviously RFP, and then you, what you don't want to do is run short. Okay. And it could be done two years from now, in which time, you know, costs could go up. Uh, so I know I erred a lot on the higher side just to avoid finding that we wouldn't have enough money requested. Okay, thank you. Is there any other town board comments? Okay, I make a motion to adjourn. I second that, enthusiastically. Supervisor Brody. Yes. Council person Doyle. Doyle. Yes. Yeah. Blackman. You can't leave to your vote. Till I vote? You need to I, say yes. I called oh, her yes, name. I'm sorry. <laughs> or no. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, my. We need my. to say yes or no. It's your choice. We can't tell you how to vote. <laughs>